yeah, I mean, there's a crazy week, still like a lot to do. I have like two clients projects right now and they just take all of my time, but it's fun. It's super cool. It's always nice to see when, you know, stuff is coming together. It's like the rewarding part, I feel, of a project. Uh, after weeks, I think it's like, you know, almost four weeks now. And uh, yeah, I don't know, it just feels, feels good. And after, after the client work is done, I'm already looking forward for some more personal work. So this again today, right, is something that I kind of set up like a week ago, just to fire with the horse head, just to remind myself that this is what I want to do. This is what I want to try. This is what I want to play with. Um, and then figure out something that, that, that looks good and that, that works for me. Because for me, it's mostly about saving an idea, right? Sometimes in the evening when you have an idea and you say like, oh, this will be so cool and I will definitely remember it and it's gone the next day. Next day you can't remember it anymore. So this is why I tend to, you know, write things down or make like a little sketch or make like a very rough composition. So when I, you know, see it again, that I was like, okay, this is, this is what I wanted to try. So this for me was perfectly fine to just tell myself this is, this is where I want to continue. How do you mix your color or do, do, how do you find this out? You know, I just, for color, I uh, just did like a very easy practice thing. And I think you see it also on my Instagram. If you do something, just do like a bunch of color variations, different colors, different color setups, do like one scalp, one model, whatever, and then color it 10 different times. Or lighting, right? Same for lighting. Um, let's say you wanna get better at lighting, yeah. Use a model and do like all different kinds of lighting scenarios with it. Just expose yourself and, and, and try something different every time. When you get into light, it's also good to, you know, look at light setups you like, maybe artworks you've seen that are really cool or um, maybe like a movie where you felt like, oh, the lighting was really, really good. These are like all ways to to kind of kind of make that work. I just want to get rid of the mouth area because I want to have more control. And maybe also like later color it differently or something. So I just want to split it. Just the interior of the mouth here. So split hidden, close holes. All this trick in the book. Okay, for now. Bop, 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 bop. Again, I don't worry about the teeth. We will do teeth later or in more detail later, let's say. Uh, close holes. Nice. Okay. Now we have that isolated. Where can we find your tutorials? Uh, I don't have like many tutorials up right now. I have an introduction to ZBrush on YouTube, so you can check this out. And YouTube is the place where I will, you know, share more, more of like tutorials or workshops or whatever, stuff like that. You will definitely find that on YouTube. And I want to do like much more on YouTube uh, this year. So that's the, that's the plan. Ideas after Berghain. <laughs> I actually lived very close to Berghain like two years ago or three years ago. The stuff I share on, on, on YouTube is all free. Yeah, you can find it there. There's also like more time lapses and stuff. It's all free for you to look at and learn. Yeah, that's a happy horse. Yeah, right? Oh, he looks like he's smiling. Come on, you gotta love ZBrush for stuff like this, right? It's just, 3D is like so much playing around and having fun. <laughs> Looking good, thanks mate, good to have you.
Horse looks like he's staring there. <laughs> you really inspire me. Thanks, mate. I'm happy to do that. It's always, always very flattering because I, I know how, how far that can go, you know, because everyone feels like uninspired sometimes, you know, or just having like a rough day or whatever. And then you see something and you're like, yeah, it's, I can do this. Let's go. Sometimes it's the little things that, that get you going again. Okay, so I will put like a cylinder there. So let's append like a cylinder as like a placeholder. Boop, boop. All right, we will deal with that later thanks monta zero form welcome mate good to have you on youtube <laughs> yeah sadly sadly you guys on youtube can't see the chat from instagram i would love to have it like all in one place that would be super dope I have to see how I do like this whole area here around the ear. If I like keep the ear or if I like do it more like a helmet, but if it goes too far to the side, <laughs> the, the, the horse becomes fat. <laughs> Ever seen a fat horse? This is what it looks like. Like super. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I can't, I can't. Whew. This is not how it's going to work. I will have to do something different. <laughs> Tutorials would be nice. I have lots of questions for you. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm definitely thinking about it because uh, I really like how you know, how people react, reacted to uh, the introduction to ZBrush that I've done. And uh, it's always like a good kind of start, let's say. Let me duplicate this. And maybe put it up here as part of like the horses. What's it called? Oh my, I don't know the word, you know, for the rider or the knight. I mean, we have like one hard surface piece here already. Maybe this could be smaller. That's okay for now, just as a placeholder, you know. What do you use to stream? from PC, uh, it's called stream on. And that gives you the link and everything for, for Instagram. So this kind of cover here for the ear, let's see. Oh, I don't have symmetry on. Let's mirror that over. Perfect. All right. Okay. That's, it's starting to make sense. Starting to look good. <laughs> give man the horse teeth <laughs> it's a it's a funny idea it will it would look hilarious oh there's like a little let me fix that maybe just sculpt it like very very like fast you know nothing too fancy Maybe also paint it like a little lighter. I 
Okay. <laughs> ah, Mark, welcome, mate. Sometimes it's just a new mindset that keeps you going again. 100%. 100%. You know, I, I did like mentorships about, uh, I think, a, a year ago. And the funny thing is that the most important part of my mentorship wasn't actually teaching them 3D or like special skills. I mean, of course, we did that as well. But I would argue that 50, 60% of it was just mindset. How do you learn? How do you, you know, motivate yourself to put in the hours every day? How do you deal with clients? How do you get clients? Portfolio. It was mostly, mostly mindset based, which I think was crazy. This could also be something for, for YouTube, I think, to talk about and, and guide you. Dude, that looked like armadillo. <laughs> I I totally get I totally get why. Maybe it's a it's a mix of both. Could be weird. I think this is like a little too much. Let's introduce some more shapes. I think we have like a overall like basic idea. I like the idea of turning this into a chess figure because it immediately kind of you know. breathe some some more life into it or like some overall idea that you know we need some kind of platform below where it like all comes together somehow and make this kind of transition happen from like you know the 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 sculpt the figure all the way to to the body to this kind of chess piece let's see actually like <laughs> that the horse has like a little tail or something but yeah let's let's see if that makes any sense and looks good later do you render in zbrush uh no not really sometimes i use like the 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 renderer but just for like very like quick stuff I think it's very cool that when you learn ZBrush, that when you just like get into it, that you do like these little renders and you don't, you don't have to be like good at rendering, you know, it's just to keep track of the stuff that you've done already. Nice. Thanks, Yuhel. This is ZBrush, mate. <laughs> a big glass of milk to get the brain juices flowing. <laughs> yeah, I, I drink a lot of milk, actually. And I love oats. Oatmeal, classic. But this was like a little milk banana shake. Super easy to do. I'm a big fan. Okay, so I think for this bottom piece... Do I try to do that in... <laughs> I mean, like, for hard surface modeling, I usually go to Cinema 4D. Does it make sense to build this kind of platform here? Let's have a look here. Yeah, I think it's it makes more sense to, to create that in Cinema 4D. But we can jump a little back and forth. I think that's a problem. We haven't done it <coughs> for quite some time. But I think it's important that when you set up your scene that you get like an overall, you know, direction of where you want to go. And testing things early, if you can, I think is really good. So let's quickly merge everything together here. Merge visible. Nice. Now we have quite some polygons but we will just use the decimation master really quick to have like less polygons to send over to Cinema 4D. And then I just model like this bottom piece and uh, yeah, then we should have like the, the setup we want. Love your art. Thanks mate. God game, welcome. 
All right. The decimation has worked and now we're at like 100,000, a little above points. That's cool. Let's check sometimes the export number. Yeah, it's super high, see? So we put that to one to avoid that we export like a super big object to Cinema 4D. Let's press go Z and head over. Currently I'm transitioning from Cinema 4D R25 to like 2023. I'm always like a little hesitant when it comes to updates because of plugins and stuff. Oh, interesting. It's actually like super off center, the whole thing, which is kind of weird. But okay, we're not worried about that. I just want to go in here and uh, model this kind of bottom piece like really fast. And I think I have like a single screen, single screen modeling. Perfect. <laughs> Jambo from Kenya, welcome. Let's go to 24 here. Maybe more, no, I don't think we need more. And then we just do some shenanigans here for some detail. Maybe this like the bottom part, and then we kinda extrude, extrude again. Something like that. Just want some. Okay. Something like this. Maybe I'll change the design later on. Let's do some control cuts to make sure that these are like hard edges. Boom, boom. Okay, nice. And then we send this over to ZBrush. There it is. Awesome. So let's append it to our scene. Where is it? Is it like super weird scaling or something? Position, size was well, super small for some reason. I don't know why. Hori, welcome. What are you doing? <laughs> Currently, I think this will be a, a knight figure. Like from chess. And I just built like this kind of bottom piece where it will sit on. And because we have these control cuts, we can now go in here and go to dynamic subdivision, actually subdivide this object. Oh no, we don't want Q-Grid. Do we want more or is it like two, three? A Q-Grid makes it more, uh, actually more cubic. All right. I think that's good for now. And we can continue playing with this weird knight. <laughs> Maybe let's make this like a little, get this like a lighter color. Hey, from Germany. <laughs> willkommen, willkommen. Okay, so let me save here really quick. Let's call this night. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from Germany. In Berlin, living in Berlin to be precise. I feel like this bottom piece here is like way too, way too small or way too thin. 
So let's just push this down. Yeah, this looks more solid. What do you use for texturing? Oh, that's very, that really depends. Sometimes I don't really texture. So the textures themselves are purely created inside of Cinema 4D with like Octane, like the whole Octane setup. Or the Octane renderer materials, let's say. But if I really go for like more control, having UVs and everything, um, then I'm using Substance Painter. All right. <laughs> Already looks kind of like a chess figure. Still a little weird, but uh, we will get there. <sighs> Definitely need more water. I can't drink milk all day, you know. <laughs> ah, thanks for the answer. Yeah, you're welcome. This is what these streams are for. They're for you. They are for you. <laughs> Silver. Hey, man. Horsey Dorsey. Yeah, let's see. So cool. Thank you. I actually like the idea of maybe like splitting this entire piece here. So I think it's time to just commit to stuff and just try things, you know, not worry too much. Because of course we can over engineer everything in our head. Does it help? Not really. Can you make the soldier one? Not this stream, I guess. I will stream for two hours or like now one, one and a half hour. Maybe next time. I mean, if this, if this really becomes something that I enjoy and where we feel like we need more, then of course I can do like the other chess figures as well. But, but for now, let's not get like ahead of ourselves. <laughs> let's, let's focus on, on what we have right now. It's like, it's never good to like over engineer, you know? I think, do I split it or do we split it? Yeah, let's split it. Looking good. Split hidden. Close holes. And then we give this some like thickness. Let's see. All right. Actually, I've been following your art recently and I was just amazed by like texturing approach. Thank you so much. I'm happy that you like the <laughs> the way I deal with things. I mean, I also like, you know, like a couple of minutes ago, somebody asked about how you get better, like with texturing and colors and everything. And this was my approach as well. I, I shied away from colors for quite some time. But yeah, if you're like too afraid to like commit to stuff, then yeah, you won't get better, right? So at some point we have to expose ourselves to the new stuff, try out new things. And I'm just trying to constantly move towards the things I like or that I enjoy. And I'm trying to do that with client work as well. Like the better I click with a client, the, the more fun I will have, you know? All right, so that's this piece. Let's close holes here.
I think I don't need this whole part that looks like skin, you know? It's a helmet, I guess. It's not a real horse, even though I like keeping the teeth for now. <laughs> we'll just see just see what works, what, what I think works, and then we, we take it from there. A tip for the news? What do you mean, Vargas? Yeah, try more things and you will end up with a banger. By the way, all your works are bangers. <laughs> Thanks, Silver. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm happy you feel that way. Of course, like, I'm like very, very strict to myself. But I, but I agree. I think just, you know, the more you create, the better it will be. Or at least if you like create, you know, all month long, then there will be something that will be good. I think you have, you have to get to this point where it actually hurts you to do more. And I think that just comes with like a lot of experience. And then you're so good that it's like perfectly fine to spend like weeks maybe on like one single artwork or one character and work on them. I mean, this is what they do in probably games and film, right? They work on these characters for months, maybe years. Whoops. <laughs> I increased the step and not the radius. <laughs> So if you really know what you're doing and in a certain like production pipeline that it makes it, of course that makes more sense to like polish things and like really trying to push like a certain character or a certain aspect of that character or whatever, right? So that does make sense. But when you, when you learn, when you do stuff for yourself, I think it mostly it just hurts if you put too much time into things that, you know, in the end might not work out. On the other hand, <laughs> double-edged sword. On the other hand, I feel it's good to, you know, just Invest in it, put in the hours, and not worry too much. It's perfectly fine to come up with stuff that you cannot share anywhere, that you cannot post anywhere. Especially if you're a beginner. Don't... For, for, for most people, I think it doesn't, it's not a good idea to actually post their stuff on, on social media. I think for a lot of people, this can be like very like counterproductive. Because then they might not get the likes or people might not say, oh, this is so cool. You're so good. You're making progress. Maybe you don't have the peers that you want to have, you know, that's what I'm trying to say. So do this for you and just have fun and improve and take one step at a time. Then you don't have like the haters or whatever. And you're not looking for this support from others to like, you know, just pursue whatever you want to do. You should not make this, you know, dependent on what other people say. It should be about you learning and, and having fun. How many hours do you work on a daily basis? This is like very different. Um, sometimes 16 hours a day, which is crazy, but let's say six or eight hours are for a client and the other time is for myself. But sometimes I do spend like a huge amount of time in 3d, but I'm trying to take it slower and my friends will probably start laughing because they know how I often, you know, embrace the grind, even though it's stupid, because let's, let's face it. We have to take care of ourselves. It, uh, we have to make sure that whatever we do, that we can do this for a very long time. It, it doesn't help if you work your ass off and then you're like all burned out after a year and you can't continue. It, this doesn't help. So you have to find something that works for you. 
And I can, I can work a lot and still be happy, you know, because for me, it's not work. I'm a freelancer. I decide, you know, when I take a break, I decide how much time I put into what. So it's, I would say it's different. It's a blessing and a curse at the same time. Because if I'm working for myself and having fun, or if I'm working for a client, they share the same domain. And this, of course, can cause issues. Because sometimes you might work too much without like even realizing it, you know, because this is second nature to you. Oh, I actually like that a lot. So let's push this even further. I like this kind of negative space that could be created here. And this kind of S curve. I like it. So you're passionate on this field. Yeah, 100%. I mean, there was a time where, where I really thought I, I wasn't. Because I really, I also like concept work a lot. Even if it's not design related, you know, just really putting my mind onto things, trying to figure out stuff. It's, and when I, when I was working as an art director, there was a time where I ended up doing more and more concept based work you know, and more let, like letting other people do like the 3D parts. I mean, I still worked in 3D, but more and more time was basically allocated to yeah, fixing stuff or like coming up with new concepts for other projects. And I really liked that. And at this point, I, I thought that, you know, yeah, 3D is cool. And I really like it, but I also can live without it. I was super wrong. <laughs> I cannot live without it because I really, really enjoy it. <laughs> but yeah, sometimes you're just wrong. <laughs> hey, Anki, welcome. Good night, Battle Rider. I know that it's very late in India. Happy, happy you find some time to join. I feel like this has to be like polished way more. Like the, the shape is really cool from the side and from the back, but from the front, it just looks like super off. Um, I think it's just has like way too much volume here in the front. Yeah, much better. Because now the negative space starts to work in our favor also from the front. Is that an NFT or something? I mean, anything can be an NFT. Even your parking ticket can be an NFT. But I think the question that you are asked is, I, I, I think I will not turn this one into an NFT. This is just for fun. And I also, I don't worry. Like when I, when I start something, I don't think like, oh, will I sell this artwork? Like, I don't know. First of all, I want to create an artwork. Everything else, if what I'm going to use it for, or if I'm going to sell it or whatever, this all comes after the most important thing for me about art is creating art. That's everything else comes after. Um, I do have tutorials on YouTube. I have an introduction to ZBrush on YouTube. So that's definitely a good way to start. What's my spec? Dude, I think I should save that somewhere. Every time people ask me, I have no clue. I have 46 gigabytes of RAM. I have a 3080 Ti GeForce and lots of processing power. <laughs> 
For 3D, you need a lot of everything. But this doesn't mean that you can do a lot with less. What I, what I see a lot is that people say, oh, when I get the software, then I'll do this. And I think this is like an overall mistake that you can make, that many people make in life. Me included. Saying that, ah, oh, once I have this, then I do that. This is like the worst. No, you will not. You were just making excuses. You can start anytime. It looks so beautiful. Thanks, mate. Happy, happy you like it already. I also like where this is going. I don't know. It's uh, just uh, feels good so far. I just want this part to be at the front, you know, kind of in there. Looks a little weird now, but I just like this kind of change of material. And that's all I'm kind of trying to do here right now. Kind of blend like these two colors more. I kind of like the idea that the whole chess piece maybe has like two, three colors. This, uh, this is ZBrush, mate. Good afternoon, Ilobo. But please don't spam, Matt. Don't spam. It's very hard for me to see messages if you spam, so please don't. Would be great if you could share your lighting workflow. Whew. Um, yeah, I, I can definitely see myself doing that at some point. Probably also on YouTube. But I, what I can recommend to you is learn from like photography. There are a lot of, you know, a lot of things that you need to understand that you, that you need to like pay attention to. And it really, really helps to kind of figure out like, how do they do it? And what's important to them? How do they achieve like a lot with just a light or two in the scene, you know? For lighting, I feel it's it's a lot about intention. Putting lights intentional. Every light has basically its own story, its own narrative. Every light has a purpose. And just start from zero, make your whole scene black, and then just do like a lot of different variations and see what you can come up with. I use Octane for, for rendering. Design looks sick. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Z-Man. Hey, Nox, what's up? Love the haircut. <laughs> Thanks. It's my uh, my winter haircut for like not styling my hair and just... Because in winter, you know, you often have a hat on and stuff and it's too cold anyway. I'm happy you like it. It's like a little bit out of bed style, you know. Superboy, welcome. True talk. Thanks, mate. Bruce said you can start anytime and I installed ZBrush on my laptop. Oh, no, my laptop is dead. Shit. <laughs> yeah, ZBrush can really mess with your hardware. I totally get that. But you have to learn... For example, when I, I also learned ZBrush on a very crappy laptop, you know? And you definitely can do it. You just have to be like aware that you can't go like for millions and millions on polygons. And when you do like certain actions, you have to be like aware of what you're actually doing. The cool thing about ZBrush is that you don't worry about the technicalities, right? I think the hard thing for ZBrush is that you don't see the technical stuff. 
Because as a beginner, it's hard for you to understand what really happens when I push X or when I use this tool and that tool. For example, when you use Dynamesh, right? Um, I don't know. We would have like super stretched out polygons here. But if I use Dynamesh, I just have like created a new mesh, you know, all these little polygons here now and they're like perfectly sculptable. This is like understanding what happens before you push something. If you Dynamesh something that has lots of detail and you, you know, choose a too high resolution, it can crash your system. So you kind of have to understand the, the stuff that's happening in the back and kind of enjoy that you don't have to worry about most of it, let's say. All right. I have, to, I have to keep up a little bit with questions here. So there's so much. Um, bop, 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 bop. You don't need ZBrush to make art, bro. That's true. Just need pen and paper. <laughs> but, but ZBrush is a different way of modeling, you know? There are different ways of modeling in 3D. And, and sculpting is definitely a thing like on its own. And I can perfectly understand that some people, they love ZBrush, but they hate like polygon modeling or something, you know? Um, or they really hate drawing, but they fall in love with ZBrush because this just feels more natural to them or it just works better for them. Um, I can totally relate. I, I can understand. But yeah, nothing keeps you from starting. Giri Moon from Brazil, welcome. Thank you so much. Do you normally make a sketch before going to ZBrush? Oftentimes I just start. I mean, today's stream, I started with a horse head and a female head, and now I'm turning this into like a kind of cool chess figure. Let's see. And I also have like a little inspiration board on my other screen. Just, you know, took some like pictures of like horses, some like details that might be interesting. For me, it's more of the technicalities, you know, about how these things like actually work and how they attach to the head to have like, you know, some functionality to it, but not like too much, just for my like personal understanding, you know? Do you have to pay to get ZBrush? Um, yes, I don't know if there's, I think there's also like a lighter version of ZBrush. Um, but, but I don't know like what kind of features it has. And I think now it's not a perpetual license anymore. Now that Maxon has bought it, I think you can actually rent it, like pay per month, like everything else, basically. <laughs> Feels like everyone is doing that right now. I'm happy to be able to inspire you, bro. Watching this is so satisfying. Thanks, Forklift. <laughs> I mean, for me, it's the same. I really enjoy time lapses. I just love watching people sculpt or model, even like polygon modeling. It's so satisfying. I just really, really like it. Okay, let's is extract that but that's sub tool, right? Extract, boom. Is it too much? Maybe a little less. Accept. All right, all right, all right. Um, <laughs> uh, 
Love seeing your consistency, man. So fun to be able to pop in and see your progress. Keep up the good work. Thanks so much, Crisp. I think it's a lot about consistency. And this is why I'm so happy that I like really made it work that I stream like every week, no matter what's going on, no matter how stressful the week was, that I'm able like, you know, to come here and chill with you guys. So I'm, I'm happy this works. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not streaming Z-Man. I'm not streaming on Twitch anymore. I stream on YouTube now. So it's Instagram and YouTube. The cool thing is, you know, I put it up on YouTube anyway. And now that happens uh, automatically. Whoops. Would it be cool to have this all in white? Not sure. Let's try. Um, what about Sculptures Pro? To be honest, I haven't tried it. I oh, mean, I mean, like Sculpt Sculptures was its own version, and then they in Sculpt they kind of. Now we have Sculptures in ZBrush as well. I think it was introduced like a, a year or two ago, maybe more. Sometimes time flies. A unicorn horn, <laughs> funny idea, um, but I think I don't want to go like super fantasy unicorn style here. I'm working with ZBrush, Substance and Max every day. That sounds like a terrific combo. Exactly, you have to test the limits of your machine and see what you can get away with. And this will change always, right? Who has the perfect rig and always like the best configuration? Like most people don't. So figure out what you can work with. Can you do the same in Blender? Yes, absolutely. You can do anything in any software. You just have to put in the time. Still trying to figure out if I want to keep this or not. Spartan helmet on horse's head. <laughs> it's actually a funny idea to even put it on top. But I don't know. I feel like I feel like it doesn't work with the the style we have so far. I actually like that the back of this part already looks like very much like a helmet, you know? Like a mix of of a helmet piece and the horse's hair more stylized let's say i i really like this kind of back part here do you hate retopo i think retopo becomes like really really cool if you like had some hours in it because after after a while it's like the same things applied over and over again and i feel like then it's fun it, retopo for me is actually fun because i don't have to think I can just execute and build stuff and I really, I really enjoy it. Thanks to Tom. <laughs> Your work is awesome. Thank you so much. 
How long does it take for you to finish? I mean, I stream for two hours and I just go as far as I can go. Most of the time I spend like a day on stuff, let's say. But for client work, it can be days, it can be weeks, sometimes months. Thanks, Bogdan. <laughs> Ethics Peer, I've, I've read your message. Please do not spam in chat. It makes it really hard for me to follow. Um, <laughs> Florian, <laughs> chess, woohoo! <laughs> the guy I played chess with every, every other week or two. <laughs> Um, the setup I use is OBS and I get the, the streaming key for Instagram from stream on. Jay McClare, I'm so much in love with your creation. Thank you so much. Happy you join me on stream as well. Bybong 3D, I usually work on Rhino, but I'm trying to learn ZBrush. Any recommendations? I had Rhino in school, man. <laughs> Totally, totally get where you're coming from. Rhino is powerful as well. Um, but if you want to learn ZBrush, I have an intro to ZBrush on my YouTube. That's the best way to start. Turn around slowly, I'm right behind you. Oh, oh. Oftentimes when you turn stuff around and then you work on it, like sculpt wise, it just starts to look like really weird. Let's delete like the back parts here. We don't need them. Delete and close holds. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like when you look joyful when you read chat. When I read chat, I, I see like all these like questions and like funny comments and stuff and I have to smile. But when I'm, when I'm working, I always have like this resting bitch face. When I'm working, I look, I look super mad and, and it gets worse. Like the more focused I am, the more I look like super serious. When I was, when I was still working um, at a company, when I was still employed, people regularly came to me and asked like, is everything okay? Because they just looked so pissed. And I was like, no, this is like my, this is my chill face. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. Looks awesome. Thanks, Jadin. Jadin Takalka. Man, that's a that sounds like a an ancient god. Jadin Takalka. I have no idea how to pronounce that. Maybe you should make wings. I like the idea design wise. It, it, I mean, it, it could be, we could have, you know, kind of wings here. Sort of, if that makes any sense. Some kind of a wing setup. I mean, this looks like scales now, but I'm just trying to see what it does. Um, like overall with this kind of shape and space. Because if I really want this to be a chess figure, it would be cool if the chess figure kind of works, right? So we don't want to get too fancy. If we get too crazy back here, if we make the figure too big, then it will not be readable. I think for me, at least for me now, I mean, the, the design can be, can have, can be crazy, surreal, abstract, have details on it. But you know, on a playing field, you will see it like this. Or maybe like that, you know, and I, I still want it to read like a horse. The, the figure itself can be very cool. But I think this is like the, the industrial designer in me speaking that imagine we have a field full of these figures and you still have to be able to read it. The horse can't look too crazy or you don't know. Is it a horse? Is it a bishop? You know, so I want to be like very clear on, on design language. Did any game company approach you for some work? Uh, actually, no. I mean, I've, I've worked 
I had like two two clients with like uh, character work, but that's it. I haven't worked in games much. I don't know. Maybe they don't work much with freelancers. Maybe, but it's, I think it's also my portfolio. My portfolio is not focused on creating, you know, game characters. So if you look at my Instagram, yeah, you see some some cool stuff, crazy colors. But you don't really know, like, does this guy, you know, work? Is, is he able to work in like a production pipeline? You know, can he provide engine ready? meshes how can he respond to getting designs from somebody else how well am i able to work with i don't know designs and then turn them into 3d figures or whatever same for film right the the portfolio i have is not really made for games or film i'm getting approached by brands um i'm a all kinds of different companies to be honest because i'm a i'm a generalist i do like a lot of different stuff let's say Oh, you didn't spam Instagram, multiplied the message. Okay, yeah, then it's just box. I'm sorry. <laughs> what are you watching? Watching a master at work? Ah. <laughs> Happy you enjoy it, mate. It is a god's name. I knew it. What god? It's a chess. Oh, sorry. I, I totally missed the messages on YouTube. I have these two chats like right next to each other. But I had a, I had a face like in the last couple of minutes where there was like just too much happening for me. It's, sometimes it's very hard to sculpt, model and also uh, respond to everything. So let me let me see. Oh. As Trotula said, like I'm going to keep the legacy license until the upgrade will be convincing enough. I totally get that. I'm also still using my ZBrush license that I bought like a couple of years ago. And for a very long time, ZBrush or Pixelogic allowed you to just download, you know, every upgrade they made for free, which was crazy. But as we see, it was not sustainable. I mean, if you, you could have probably guessed, right? But I'm kind of sad that it didn't work out. You know what I mean? I kind of like the idea of them doing it like different with like like other companies is the stream still working on instagram i just got like a an error for some reason So YouTube has less, YouTube has less lag than Instagram. I mean, I've, I, my, I myself, when I watch stuff, I'm often watching like on YouTube, so I don't know how it is on Instagram, but yeah, it's probably safer. <laughs> For Retopo, I mostly do it by hand, to be honest. Sometimes auto Retopo, but just, you know, to get like a quick update on what I'm working on and to have like a better idea where things are headed. So it's basically more for like, you know, figuring stuff out, but not really for a, a good clean mesh to like continue working with. It is your portfolio for sure, because to just look for game ready models in portfolio. Yeah. Yeah, I thought so. But then again, do I want to, I, I mean, I, I asked that myself like many, many years ago. Do I want to commit like heavily and go into games? And, you know, I did some soul searching and the answer for me was no, I don't want to. I like being a generalist. I like doing like all kinds of different stuff. I like the fact that 3D is so versatile, that I can do so many things with it, that I can work in like so many different 
areas, you know, it's for me, this is super, this is like one of the exciting parts about 3D just enables like so much. I, uh, I love it. Um, no row, I don't use Blender. I use Cinema 4D as my basically program where it all comes together. But you can definitely use Blender, Blender for that. Blender is super powerful. Oftentimes, it's, it's not either or, right? It's what feels good for you, what you feel like confident using. And maybe, maybe you love Blender, but someone else doesn't. And you just have to figure out what, what works for you. That's why I really recommend that, you know, just try and see. I've worked with many different 3D programs, you know, different CAD programs, different polygon modeling programs. And of course I started with Cinema 4D, but of course I asked myself like, yeah, what's, what's it like in a different program, you know, and I always came back to Cinema 4D. For me, it worked, worked best with what I do. And I, I love the flexibility of all the tools and how they work together. I just really, really like it. Still not sure about that. I feel like it's coming together like a little bit in this area, but I don't like the other areas. Stuff like this can be like very, very, I feel, I feel like I've been, you know, spending way too much time on, <laughs> on this bottom part here. <laughs> But in order for all the like these little parts to like work together, I guess there's no way around it. Sometimes stuff takes time, which brings us to something that we said like earlier on stream, right? Don't worry if stuff takes time. If you spend a lot of time doing something, then just then that's just how it is. Don't try to like always find the best way of, of doing things and the fastest way. I don't know. It's I feel like you, you, you end up doing nothing. Then you get so distracted that you get like paralyzed. Oh, what's the next perfect step? What's the next thing I should do? What's the perfect way to do X? And yeah, th th there is no perfect way. The perfect way is to get started, to have time spent in it. And then, then you, be, you will be able to see the next step. Then you can decide what is next for you because you're in it, you know? Thank you for answering. You're very welcome, mate. Do you have any habits that you wouldn't want to have or, or do want to have while doing your work? I mean, yeah, absolutely. You know, sometimes, especially during like high stress phases, I procrastinate because of the stress. And uh, for me, the best I'm, 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 I'm trying to be like very, very, very direct, like with myself, knowing what kind of habits I have, what kind of good habits I have. I really, I really like this quote that first you shape your habits and then your habits like shape you, you know, it's, it's exactly that. It's like all these little things every day that really make a, a huge difference on your like everyday approach. So for me, a very, very important part is that I can, you know, just start like this, that I'm able to kind of quiet down my whole mind, like all these things that are going on in my mind, that I find this kind of space where I'm just with myself before I start to work 
fully focus on just this one task that's ahead of me and then start. And for me, the best way to do it is to isolate myself like from all other thoughts. I have to let go of other thoughts, of all the stuff that's going on in the world, of all the stuff that I have to do, that I want to do. In that moment, it's just that one task and you have to do that one task and then the next task and then the next. I think that's one of the most important things for me when it comes to uh, productivity. Yeah, Lux, exactly. Uh, I don't know how much you have missed, but this turned into a chess figure, which was the, the plan kind of from the beginning. But I started with like two heads, basically, the, the like a horse head that I've tweaked like a little bit. And I will tweak it more because I'm not a big fan of the ears so far. Um, definitely will change the ears and the eye area. And like, you know, there's, there's still still much stuff to do. Maybe I even turn this horse head into a more abstract one. But for now, I kind of... For now, I kind of like it. Bottom part looks kind of like flames. Yeah, but I don't know. It's like for it's kind of weird. I don't know if I need like a second layer. I probably have to tweak them more. I'm I'm not yet satisfied with like these like details here. Maybe it's a color thing. Maybe it would be great if they would be like darker. Not too dark though. Let's play a little bit with color. I think this is better. Oops, symmetry was off, so let's mirror and weld. Hey, super clown, uh, what do you use? Timo and Kumar, love all your scalps. Thank you so much, mate. Damn, that's a nice quote. Yeah, right? I'm a sucker for quotes. I, I really love quotes. How do you set up the streaming split screen? It's a stream on stream on gives you the, the link basically and the key, and then you can use your OBS setup. Good afternoon. Hey Lobo, what's up? Is Instagram still working? I mean, my phone has issues connecting somehow. Or did most people like switch to, to YouTube now? Because there it's just working. <laughs> Love a good habit. I mean, it's, it's definitely these little things, right? If you have good habits, they can take you very far. But the problem is that you also lose your good habits if you don't reinforce them. I think that's a, that's a, that, that sucks. That you can even lose the good ones. <laughs> I think I just want this piece and see if I can do something more with it. Delete hidden.
Stark Steven, welcome, bro. It's working. Nice. Thanks, Eo. Thanks, Amron. It feels good when you have someone to work with. Absolutely. Every time I watch someone, um, I watch someone sculpt, I feel the urge to sculpt as well. 100%. And this is, can also be like, you know, we talked about habits and stuff. If you, if you feel like you're not getting started or you're like struggling getting started, this, this could be something for you. Kind of like figuring out if is there someone else working on something. This is why, you know, working with peers is so good or like having peers. It doesn't matter if you like learn 3D or you go to the gym, you know, if you have other people to push you or like to look up to or to remind you that you could like, you know, put in the work now. That you should stop like procrastinating and get shit done. <laughs> Sometimes this can like really help. Hey Munir. I wanted to ask, what are your thoughts on character art for games? Is the field worth getting into? This is hard to answer because if it's, if it's worth getting into, it's about what, what you enjoy, you know? I'm not, I'm not in that field. I know some people who are and they love it. I know some people who are in the field and they don't like it because it's like too stressful or they basically are like sick of doing, you know, just character skins all day. Some love it. Some are more specialized. The thing is, I think it's also a lot about the pursuit, you know? Maybe you're not in games right now, but you want to be someday. But just know what kind of life you're getting into. Of course, this can be super fun. It can be super fulfilling. And I think if you, that any area is worth it, you know, if you make it to the top 10%, you will have no, no, nothing to worry about. If you become really, really good, people will want to work with you. You just have to stick to it. I mean, look at what I do, right? I, like if you, if I don't have like a super strong, like classic 3D portfolio, I don't. But if you look at my Instagram, there's like a lot of stuff. And like some people just, you know, see that and be like, okay, this is, this is our guy. I want to work with him. I'm sure he can come up with something like really cool for our project. And this took years for the, for the, for the, for the longest time. I did all kinds of jobs and it was not like clients came to me because of like my Instagram work or that, you know, the, the personal work that I did like over the years. The, the first jobs I got as a freelancer was from like free, freelancer sites and from like art station and like basically from everywhere. <laughs> I just put all my stuff everywhere to be, to be seen, to be found. And now more and more it happens that people come approach me, like, do you have time for this project? Which is super awesome. But it's also not the, like, like, let's say standard way. But I bet if you ask like 10 people, you get 10 different answers. So to, to close the statement, I just said, like, just go, just go and have fun. If you worry about if it's worth it, you will, you will give 
up like halfway through, you know, just have fun. See if this is for you. See if this is something where you can invest like, you know, a lot of time into it and just have fun. And maybe it even doesn't matter to you how, how long it takes, you know. When I, when I got my first job after my studies, I was allowed to do 3D like every day. I was, a, I was a working as a graphic, uh, graphic designer, basically. I did illustrations and 2D animations and also some 3D. But, you know, for me, in my mind, it was like, I'm allowed to do 3D stuff and get paid for it. That in itself was my dream coming true. I had a job and people paid me for doing like 3D. And after like two years, I was the 3D guy and all the 3D jobs like came to me in that company. And then I became the art director for 3D stuff. So just, just go at it and have fun and get good. And then opportunities will definitely come your way. I'm 100% I'm sure of it. Thank you for answering, man. Keep rocking. You're very welcome, mate. Are you going to switch over to C4D or will you do a C4D tutorial on how you work inside of it? Um, for my live streams, I usually don't go to C4D become, because then it becomes a little more technical, you know, modeling wise and everything. Um, so definitely not today. But I will share, definitely share my, my process and I also will make tutorials for Cinema 4D on, on YouTube. That's definitely coming. I want to do a lot this year on YouTube. But uh, yeah, there's so many things I want to do. But uh, I have to have the room for it, you know. But it's definitely coming. What would you be interested in if you weren't introduced to sculpting or 3D in general? Um, that's a funny question because it could be anything. I think most, most people, you know, worry too much and kind of over engineer. And then they kind of get stuck. Because of course, I mean, there, you could, you could be doing like so many different things. You could be successful in so many different, um, so many different fields, you know, it's all like out there. It's all like possible. There's not just like one way for you to live in this world. There is not just this one passion, just this one path. There are infinite paths for you, infinite. You can decide tomorrow to open up a bakery and make the craziest breads in the city and have like your own shop and everything. And that can work if you want to do it. That can absolutely work. If you decide tomorrow, you will become an illustrator and work on it for years. You'll be an illustrator and you will probably be good if you stick to it. So for me, it's not really about what would you do if you wouldn't do like 3D, right? It could be anything, anything I put my mind to, anything that I would like to learn, anything that I'm interested in, anything that I would like to, you know, where I would like to move into a certain direction. It could be anything. And that's the fun thing. That's the crazy thing about the universe. It can be anything. And that's the crazy thing about our mind. If you put your mind to it, it's there. If you put your mind to it, it can become reality. That's the, that's, that's really weird and kind of scary, but also super exciting. I, I rarely do sketches before I sculpt. Sometimes I do, but sadly I haven't done like any sketch for quite some time. You confirmed what I think. Thanks. You're very welcome.
You sound like a dad. Go, 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 Jet. Just have fun. <laughs> That's good. I'll, I'll be your C4D dad and your ZBrush daddy. That's cool. I'm fine with that. Sometimes, you know, sometimes all you need is a little push. Sometimes you're in your head too much. Sometimes you worry too much. Sometimes all you needed your friend to say was, go for it. Don't worry. And sometimes we have the friends. We don't have the friends that we need, if that makes sense, you know? Sometimes you need a friend who like tells you the things that you don't want to hear. Sometimes you need a friend to be like a pain in the ass so you can overcome whatever you're struggling with. Maybe that's not a friend, the kind of friend you wanted, but it's the kind of friend you needed. Hey, what's up, man? I'm good, I'm good. Chilling. Enjoying my weekly, weekly live stream where I'm like very, very proud and happy that I finally managed to like keep it up. And it's really good to see, you know, people coming back every week to hang out and chill. It's really awesome. This looks like something, this part here. If I really wanted to be like super clean, I wouldn't even sculpt it. This is something that I would model in Cinema 4D because for me, like poly modeling is, it's not intimidating, you know, it's super fun for me. And uh, I'm, I'm quite fast, I think. So I don't worry about like pushing this too much. Oh, it's still partially hidden. It is actually, okay. <laughs> okay. So let's delete. The rest of it, delete hidden, nice. And then we can mirror it over. Okay, okay, okay. Or maybe, I mean, JH asked for me like going to Cinema 4D. Maybe, maybe we go to Cinema 4D and render this a little bit and, and do like the next stage in Cinema 4D. This could actually be fun. We still have half an hour. Could be fun to push it in Cinema 4D with some more details here. Maybe, maybe that's the next step. Why not? When I, when I send sculpts to, to Cinema 4D, I usually just do a quick decimate, like plugin, decimation master, pre-process current, and then decimate the model. So I just have like less polygons in Cinema 4D. And then I usually do like a retopo or use it as is. If it's like nothing that it's animated or anything, if it's like a static mesh, then sometimes I just leave it as is. But if I want stuff to be like cleaner or like want to work with it more, then I usually retopo it. But that's just my way of doing things. And painting stuff, the thing is, if you paint stuff in, in ZBrush, you know, I, I painted her lips, for example. This is not really paint. This is like the, the vertices, the points on this model are painted. If we go in very, very closely, you see it. It's actually the points that have color. It's like a vertex map, basically. So you can export that into, into Cinema 4D and then work with it. But it's a very quick and dirty way, let's say. It's not something that you actually use in production or for like, if you want to paint your models really well, you have to have like UVs and then like a cool painting program like Substance Painter. Amazing work, Duke. Dude, thanks, Stefan. Hey, Gabriel. Warp art. Hey mate, this is sick. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, are you going for old chess figures? Uh, I don't know. It wasn't the plan. 
I mean, when I started, I just had like this head and like, you know, this, this scan of a, of a horse. And then I started like tweaking it and this is what came out of it. Um, so I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure yet, you know, let's duplicate this thing. Actually give it some real subdivisions, not just, uh, not just dynamic subdivisions, but real sub -Ds. And then we delete that. So we have this space here to play with. Yeah, nice. So I don't know, maybe, maybe this is just like a, you know, trying stuff out. I don't know, but maybe we go for the next chess figure next week. I'm, I'm not sure yet. This is something that I haven't thought through. <laughs> And I think that's fine too, right? You don't always have to have like a, a perfect idea of everything that you want to do and what it should be. I like, you know, just going for it and then kind of seeing what comes out of it. Do you know how to do like opacity maps? And yeah, there's level, like it, it really depends where, you, where you're rendering, right? If, if you render in an engine, then you probably need this kind of opacity map to like control the opacity. Um, in, in Octane, I can set up glass or subsurface scattering materials that do exactly that. Um, but of course, if it's like more, let's say, If it's like more intricate, if it has like more detail to it, let's say, then that could be a different story. Whoops. Oh, whoops, <laughs> classic. Let's get rid of that. I think I actually extruded like too much. This has become like very, very thick. So let's just push it in a little bit. I don't like the shape here at the bottom, to be honest. Maybe we get rid of that entirely. I think we get rid of it. I'm not a big fan. Nice work, brother. Thanks, Kevin. Reminds me of Canada. Really? How is that? All right, so let's duplicate this one. Okay, nice. And then we merge them together. Merge down. Okay. And now let's duplicate them again. 
duplicate and merge down and duplicate again. Probably like a little too much, a little too big. Would be cooler if they would be smaller. But this is also something I would probably tweak in Cinema 4D, I guess. Then I could have them all like in a cloner, you know, it's easier to set up, I feel. But I like the fact that something is, uh, is happening down there. Um, this is ZBrush, mate. Oh, the maple leaf. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> now I see it. Ah, uh, okay. So I like the idea of just, you know, using this and uh, sending it over to Cinema 4D. Let's do something, something different. We still have 20 minutes. I would like set up like a quick, quick material and light setup and then add some more details here and there. I think it's a good idea. I like it. So let's save. I only saved twice. Oh my God. So risky. Yeah, on my phone, it's still not working. Interesting. Instagram was updating on my phone. That's why the stream didn't work. <laughs> okay, I eat some more water. And then we go to Cinema 4D next. Ah. All right, so let's merge this all together. Here we have it, only 1.7 million vertices. Or is it points? Yeah. <laughs> so, use and keep polypaint, yeah, let's do that. Pre-process current. And then we start rendering this night. Oh, nice. I'm listening to like some kind of like retro wave right now and uh, really feeling the bass. Sounds awesome. I somehow work better on electronic music. Kind of the, I don't know if it's like the speed or the overall vibe, I don't know why, but it, it really helps me to get stuff done. Decimate current. Okay, now it's like 300,000 instead of 1.7 million. And we just sent this over. So let's go. Let's check really quick if the export is at one. Export was really, really big again. So let's hit go Z and send it over. Hey, no man, welcome. All right, here we go. So I think we don't need these, only this one. Let's center the axis here. Nice. And I think I need like my single screen set up with renderer. Oh, wait a second. Where's like the startup? Okay. I love your works. Good luck with them. Thank you so much. <laughs> so let's go. Let's hit render here. Use like standard Instagram four to five. Okay.
Okay. So for, for, for like really quick setups, I'm a very big fan of HDRIs, not overcomplicating things. When I, when I choose HDRIs, I'm looking for like more traditional setups. For example, like how many light sources are in there? Where's the light coming from? What color does this light have? So I have this kind of Skylit garage. I think it's also free. You can download it. I think on Poly, is it Polyhaven? I think it changed its name. Let's do like a dark background for now. Okay, so we have some like basic light setup. And I always just throw my lights and environment and stuff into a composition folder. So I don't have it in my scene, you know. We could also create a floor here. And just give it like a, basically make it a shadow catcher. So we just want some shadow. We don't really care about a floor here. We just wanted to catch some shadows. Okay. Damn, so awesome. <laughs> Thanks, mate. How long did it take you to be this good? I started at 15. So that was 18 years ago. But I think professionally like 10 years. Because, you know, as a kid, it was a hobby. I spent some time here and there. I actually got my first internship also because of 3D. But yeah. Long journey, but so worth it. This is next level. Thanks, mate. Really happy you like it. So let's throw some color onto it to have like some more, some more contrast. And then we, you know, continue like modeling. Now this is all like merged together. Um, but I think uh, usually I have this kind of split functionality. Ah, here it is. It separates the polygon groups by like poly islands. I really love this. So it's basically like one click, takes a little to you know process. And now I have like all the meshes separate here. And then I can, you know, select them or merge them like back together. Did I select everything? No, there was one missing. Okay, now that's the guy. Let's just give it a material. Just, just quick. I just want something, some like feedback, you know, and kind of separate these shapes. Do you 3D print your works? Not yet, but it's definitely my plan to, to get into that this year. I definitely want to get into 3D printing. Just uh, would be would be so awesome. I could also put this all like in a, in a symmetry object. No, because we don't need these actually. Boop. Boop, boop, boop. Nice. That's really nice. Thank you. Thanks, Veronica. Happy you like it. Or happy you like where we are at right now. We do the same here. And here, this is an object within an object. So I can throw this in there and then throw this into a symmetry object. Nice. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Where's the horse head? That's the horse. Let's make that gray as well. 
Let's make the eyes like black and a little reflective. Let's see how that looks like. And name your layers, always name your layers. I'm just not doing it because we have only like 10 minutes left on this stream. So I'm trying to speed things up here. Probably make it like a little more reflective so we see that. Yeah, nice. Hi from Indonesia. <laughs> Welcome, mate. Best regards from Germany. So is this also gray, by the way? Probably. Let's create like a Taurus, make it a little smaller for some like additional details. Oh, I see. Let's isolate this one. That's the bottom part. And then we can send this here. And again, I just want to have something like to, to separate the shape here. Nice. Looking good, coming together nicely. I like it. This could also be darker. I mean, yeah, the head is still showing here from the back, but the back is not done, right? It's more about like the overall idea. So let's save this project. Let's call it night. Could be nice to show them to people in exhibition with your 3D printed and like painted works. Not a bad idea, huh? Yeah, 100%. I mean, I'm, I'm well aware that I'm sitting off on like a lot of 3D data and that probably a lot of it could be, you know, used. Or let's say we could like play more with it. That's why I'm so excited. I definitely want to get into 3D printing for exactly that reason. Let's introduce some metal here. Let's replace this kind of cylinder. Nice, some more subdivisions. Maybe we introduce some metal here. Could also be like a symmetry object, right? It's symmetrical. We don't need the other half. So let's just mirror that over. And then throw a metal material on it. Maybe like very quick, you know, just seeing how it looks like with some roughness so it's not like too reflective. That's kind of cool. Yeah, this is beautiful. Thanks, Alexandros. I'm actually amazed that it also looks good still on uh, that it works with the setup I have on Instagram. So you're able to see a little bit of the render. You're also seeing like the hierarchy a little bit. So works. Works quite well. Bro, how much RAM are you running on? Uh, 64 gigabytes. What CPU are you using? I don't know. Does it show up here? It's an Intel Core i9 10850K. 
whatever that says. I have I have no clue. I'm a complete hardware noob. I always let my friends build my rigs. <laughs> And just like, I need a lot of everything and then just go. Okay, I think I'm done with that one. What about these two? I would probably replace them as well with a cylinder and create like some nice detail. So let's use uh, this kind of move brush here. like placement brush. Let's give it like some more rotation elements, maybe even more 32. All right. Can you show your workstation? Uh, not now. Maybe at another time in, 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 in stories or so. Because right now I have quite a complicated, like, I think complicated setup. It's a little bit like too much, like a sphere. I like this one more. Okay, and then again, let's place it on the surface. Maybe make it a little smaller. And now I have to like see how this kind of setup here works. Or maybe we don't worry too much and just look for something that looks cool. <laughs> Bro is flying on that setup. <laughs> oh. I need friends like yours. Yeah, they're truly awesome. I'm definitely blessed with awesome friends. Okay, so let's create a spline here to connect them. I mean, I don't even know if that makes sense, right? But at this, at this point, I don't worry, want to worry about like the technicalities. Okay, looks kind of good. Let's have that point downward, like so. Okay, it's intersecting at the top, so I think I need a new point here to push it like outwards a little bit. The curve of the spline looks very unrealistic. Now it's better. I like it much more now. I don't know if we turn this into like a, just some kind of rope or so. But what I definitely know is that all these pieces belong like as a group. Let's call this head details for now because I don't want to know, I don't know what to call it and just throw it into a, a symmetry object. Now we have it on both sides. Nice. Looks a little weird. Maybe we like clone a bunch of spheres on it. So let's create a cloner, a sphere, and then just use that spline to drive the cloner.
and now we have like all these spheres, but it has to be like the same distance. So it's uh, probably even. Your hands are very fast. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've done all these things like a couple of times. <laughs> you get fast automatically after a while. Okay, um, let's turn this into a curve that's like a little more even. Oop, I think I cloned too many spheres. Well, let's lower that. I don't know, is it too much? Do we want to see some of the rope? I think it looked better with like a mix of the two, right? Something like this. Yeah, a little tweaking here and there, but... Um, let's get creating. No, I'm in Cinema 4D right now. I started in ZBrush for the, for the sculpt. And then I send it over to Cinema 4D now to model and uh, set up the scene with some materials and, and light and everything. Chat you again next week. Great as always. Thanks, Lux. See you next week. I'm in Cinema 4D right now. Move that out a little bit more. Nice. Whew. Okay, I think like two hours are over. So the stream will end soon. But there's like one, there's one more thing I still want to do. <laughs> what app do you use to make a scene? Like mostly like Cinema 4D. I often start in ZBrush and then go to Cinema 4D for like modeling, rendering, setting stuff like this up. So now I have this head and somebody earlier asked me like how I, you know, use models from ZBrush. So I have this decimated head model here and now I will use it as a, as a base to like remodel, to like basically create some armor on top. Just very quickly. I don't know, sometimes they have this stuff to protect their, their, their eyes, right? I don't even know what that looks like, but maybe we can have something like this as well. Not sure yet. But let's put something there and then we can see if we can, if we can work with that. Okay. I just followed you for a few months. A great master, hope to learn more from you. Uh, happy to have you. Yeah, don't be afraid to ask like questions and I'm, I'm here for you. Happy to help. Your Octane doesn't crash when you do live viewport like this? Uh, no, it doesn't. I mean, sometimes it does, especially if I click stuff like too fast. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it crashes on me.
I mean, I know that it doesn't make like perfect sense here, but Is this stupid? I don't know. Whoops. This was actually not merged. Okay, that's better. Yeah, not too sure about these like I parts here. So let me split that for now. I will get rid of it for now. But I think there's more to play with, like when we look at the head. It's like view settings. I don't like the ISO line editing. I wanna see the topology that I actually have. Limantas, dope art Knox, thank you so much. I wish I had the skills to do this. It's amazing. Um, it's you can definitely learn. It's it's not a superpower or anything. This is definitely something that 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 you can learn. It's just a certain amount of time dedicated to it. Oh, I see. I have to isolate that. Okay, I think that works really well. Let's create like another spline, just sketch on top here, but we need We need snapping for that. Something like this. Okay. And now we can use the same object basically. So let's duplicate the spline. And then we duplicate the cloner and just use the other spline. So we have this kind of same setup. Nice. Looks like it belongs together. <laughs> Whee! I think that's it for today. I'm super happy. Two hours, a little more. Uh, can you add unicorn? I mean, now it's easy. We can now add a cone. Now it becomes like part of the armor. Oh, snapping is still on. <laughs> oh, this looks so weird. There you have your unicorn. <laughs> So lucky to join again today. Ah oh, man, thank you so much. Happy to have you. I'm still learning how to use Blender. Oh, that's good. And failing miserably. <laughs> that's 
that's part of growing. The more you fail, the more you learn. I'm subscribed now. Happy to have you, mate. I also think that a lot of skills, you know, translate to different software applications. So, you know, this is why the software doesn't matter that much. You know, when you learn sculpting, it doesn't matter if you learn it in Blender or in ZBrush or like polygon modeling in Blender or in, or in Cinema 4D or 3ds Max or Maya or whatever, right? The, the rules are the same everywhere. So it's more about where you can learn those rules and where can you get better at that. And most of it is practice, of course, looking for people who already do what you want to do and then take it from there. But yeah, failing miserably is definitely part of the journey, man. I was, I was frustrated so much. And that's just part of it. If you're frustrated, you're about to learn something. I'm using a 3080 Ti GeForce. Love how much fun you have while making this. Thank you. Yeah, I like, I really enjoy this. I, I'm so happy that I started streaming last year and uh, this has, has really become, you know, live streaming has really become something that I really enjoy. And of course, you guys are part of it. When, I, when I'm alone, I don't laugh that much. Or, yeah, I'm still like doing like weird stuff. Um, if stuff looks funny, you know, I, I, I would definitely try it and see what it looks like. And I'm definitely having fun off stream as well. But being here with you guys uh, is definitely different. Yeah, people definitely wanted a unicorn. <laughs> and it looks funny. Oh, I, I, just, I just realized, guys, guys. Uh, we actually need two different horses, right? I mean, yes, of course, they could have different color schemes for like white and black. But we actually need two different horses. Maybe two different styles. I don't know. Maybe it's overkill. Maybe f at first, you know, just stick with one design and do it like with colors. And then later on, maybe that would be like too much or asking for too much. Sometimes it's better to look, keep it simple and then, and then, you know, see what you can do with it or how far you can push things. What about this one? Can we place it on top here and make it like much smaller? Where's it placing them? Okay, it was just too small. But it's not placing them on top here. Oh no, it does. See guys, it's, it's, it's hard to stop, but I, I will, I will stop now. This is like the last thing I'll do here. Just want to see what that looks like. And that, then, then that's the stream for today. All right. And now all of you go into the symmetry object. Nice. Glad I found you, got to go. Yeah, bye. I'm, I'm going now as well. That was it, guys. Thank you so much for joining me on the stream. Again, it was, I had a blast. Coco, greetings from Costa Rica. Greetings from Germany, mate. Sadly, I'm going now. We've been live for two hours. I'm, I'm happy with the result. Definitely a cool direction. I don't know if I'm gonna do like a full chessboard, but this was definitely a cool start and lots of fun. Yeah, right, if you just differentiate the colors, like each player would have the same, same pieces. And I think that's cool. Maybe it's too much. And I think it makes it harder to like, you know, see where's what, if you have to get used to like two different styles. I think it's also better to perceive if they're actually both the same, but with different colors, yeah. All right, guys, have an awesome day or evening and uh, see you next week. Bye.